Well, this episode of Thieves, I was about to say Hellenic League, but you know what I mean. This particular episode has been a turbulent one as for the beginning. What do you mean has been? It's always been. And it's turbulent right now to the point for the first time in the Hellenic League's history, we have a provincial rebellion. Which shouldn't take long. It is by Tech. Which is led by the Ibero um, Amasa. Which they do have a good fort defense. So there is an insurgency in this uh, area here. Also, we had a governor of Colchis, but I don't know what happened to him. He probably resigned. Or whatever happened to him. Unless we recognize him. I mean, you can't miss it. He's probably a Greek. So these are some of the known personalities of this uh, rebellious area. Led by this king here. They have three forts, forts that we have built, which was originally built as border posts because we border with the uh, Persian Empire, which they have not made any single moves against them, but we don't want to give them any ideas. And originally we we're sending more troops to there, but I believe we can handle it. We have the numbers. So change course. The Mega Grease. They're to be stationed over there. We're sending two armies up. Fast transport fleet should be turned back at uh, back to Phasis. They will continue their course, their present course, towards Karkadon. And as for myself, who is currently stationed over here, well, we're here to, you know, Try to keep the peace. Thanks to royal visitation and harsh treatment. And a not so corrupt governor, I may hope. Expand Gordian Estate. So you're the one who owns the holding of Gordian, which, again, I considered this city as to be, well, my second um, residence or capital, unofficially. Kind of makes me want to move it, but however, it is not um, Biosh. You got to have a lot of political influence and, and all that. But again, sounds like a bit of a vanity project. We're working on. But unfortunately, Phrygia is ran by a somewhat corrupt governor. Don't want to make him disloyal. That'll make things worse. Look, he's done some corrupt things, but over time it'll slowly go, right? Unless you want to change, um, where is it? Gee, why didn't we have these? Um, there's something like that, but we don't do oratory. Unless you want to change uh, to an aristocratic monarchy, which seems like a good idea in theory. Which means uh, you could have one military idea, which we we'll still keep this to our target, but we would lose this and this. But, I don't know.
As I said before, we've been expanding this city like this ship like it should be a big city, but it isn't right now. Don't think about it right now. Focus on a rebellion. And also we gotta appoint a new governor. Yipe, very corrupt. Y'all do. Maybe I should dump somebody. Depending on age, of course. I don't typically do this. You can keep your old name of origin. We're just doing that because... I know it lowers our legitimacy. But legitimacy will go all the way up. Especially when my health is on a bit of a decline. But I'm not going to seek treatment for myself. Because I believe her time will come soon. Again, her health lowered because of attempted assassination of Cleopatra, which isn't going to work. So if we have a much higher stability, we may have to embrace an aristocratic monarchy to move away from the old autocratic monarchy. What's the main benefits of an autocratic uh, monarchy? Is uh, civilization. But to change it to that, you have less tyranny, more noble happiness, more what appears to be Freeman output and civilization value. Story five person. Yeah, we would be more civilized as an aristocratic. And also, I may pass another controversial decision regarding the uh, Phrygians that live here. Because, you know, again, some would think it's a vanity project. You know, half of the people who run our armies and navies are Phrygians. So I'm thinking about giving them the possibility of um, promoting them to nobles. Actually, uh, promote its rights increase. Because there are a couple of Phrygian nobles, I mean, we can see that. Hellenic, Phrygian. That down here. Um, it's just 73 of them. Well, we have a lot of Egyptian nobles. How much would it cost me? Five political influence. Prevent them from promoting, from promoting beyond noble. Just promote new culture and noble rights. Reduce the happiness from both my primary culture and all the integrity. I'm willing to take it. Let's stop this rebellion. We'll do something about that light of the tree. Get over there! to stop this little insurgency that's ongoing. And since this is a defensive war, that ups the military experience a bit. Because some still have the experience from the uh, last war with Kozbich. Day is in revolt.
So again, they already have the highest. And their nobles are recognized because we're just simulating at the fact that the Phrygians are a half no, half of the uh, Hellenic armies ran by Phrygians. Hellenic military, I should say. No, don't care about Ionia, their opinion of us. They're probably going to be holding out over there. Oh! That's the king himself. I know where they're going exactly. How's your husband, who is the admiral? I know he's frail, and he's become uh, lustful. Makes him less loyal to the state, but that means uh, these two are likely going to have more children in the future, which is good for the line of succession to be more simplified. But I'll give you treatment, because you're a good man. There, but we'll meet soon. Get ready to force much. be asking Persia for access because they're a competing power. They're at war with the Moors, the Persian Morian War. Oh my goodness. With this madman power versus I don't know. That that would be a very large conflict. If the Persian Empire wins the war over the Mauryans, then we'll know who is the undisputed master of Asia is. Finish them all. Begin your march back. We'll capture the rest soon. To call it the official end of hostilities. Well done. for your arrival. We don't need your help. One last area to take, then that's it for them. Let this be a lesson to any of those provinces that dares to rebel against the uh, Hellenic League. Again, it's a very um, less violent war than people would think. You have no choice. No aggressive expansion because they rebelled against us. But you know, they are an integrated people, so... This will help. Or, um, 
No. Just banish still as a class. Um, anything that does less to the penalty of the um, of that integrated people. You'll soon be sent to Phrygia. Get on board and we're gonna send you to uh, Magna Grecia. You're to be needed there. Next place is likely to rebel will be Galatia Tromti, it's in Phrygia region. I do know how sometimes this area can get a bit overpopulated to the point where we can't provide enough food for them, even though Thebes is doing a great jump on the food because we keep bringing in the grain. And how I favor the city of Gordian as of late. Well, two things. Okay, where's this uh, policy that encourages migration? Centralized population here. May sound like a bad idea, but we want to make it our second, you know, unofficial capital of the Hellenic League. Provides plenty of food here. It is civilized. Remember, it's the slaves that are unhappy, so you should provide them something for the slaves. unrest but Gordian's doing fine it's just the problem is it's the great power and a corrupt governor which is on you all right and also I would like to hold this holding for me personally and my family sounds like it's a corrupt thing to do but it's just a way of saying hey I live sometimes. Oh dear, a lot of unused holdings that you could spend your money on. Especially areas that we've captured in previous wars where nobody's found the time to um, purchase the holdings. Ah, here it is. Go on in. We don't get too many holdings, but there's some money in that. So yes, that adds up to the corruption, which it'll slowly go away. I won't do anything corrupt, we swear. Of course, if you have more corruption, that's going to hurt the legitimacy. Speaking of legitimacy... Hope you're not going to take up too much of the food. Doesn't look like it.
There, now we're starting to get money, but however, the balances tend to vary. Since we're at the period of peace here, lower the maintenance. This is the area that's most likely to rebel. It's got a fort there. Let me see, two granaries, two aqueduct, a fortress, tax office, academy, court of law, forum. Doesn't the mill increase their happiness a bit? Yeah. It'll do, but want to add another aqueduct because you would get a close enough population capacity to have uh, make it become a metropolis which I would like to see that potential one day Your excuse. Oh yeah, rival of a ruler. Well, you're dying out. We're we're all we're both old men. We have got no time for him fighting. Should we go for an aristocratic monarchy? Because um, I mean, far less tyranny. Nobles will be happier. More frame and output and be more civilized that we should move away from an autocratic monarchy of course the drawback is that national commerce would just go down one also lose the um, monthly ruler in favor of less corruption but more loyalty of generals and admirals would do good or perhaps governors or even this, if we want to get more, you know, what we want in future conflicts. I mean, it sounds like a good idea, but do we really want to go for it? Where? Ten daughters. Oh, here. What do you say about integrating? You are very demanding. So I would love to integrate you. barely make any money. But I say we have to lower you know, lower the fleet maintenance too. start pleasing the other areas. Mm. man approaches us with a request for a room and some help to write a grand tale for the ages. Promises it will make sure to include the Hellenic League into the tale, so it will be beneficial for us as well as himself. If he manages to write this epic, he will receive the goodwill of the common folk as well as showing everyone a wise Benefits rulers we are. Speaking of vanity projects, we will make sure all his needs will be fulfilled while he's right this epic. So we're spending half of our treasury for him, but or we make good money for it. Let's 
something to please the slaves. That we can't do anything with. Getting notifications from my phone of other things that has nothing to do with anything. Yes, the ever disloyal city that we can't get attacked together. Harsh treatment. Get them back around. Make my royal visitation up there. Move over. Switch places. Because I need to build buildings for this uh, unruly city. Next rebellion will likely take place here. Get that too. He was a researcher. gonna do much. Send them to Phrygia. What is that old brother of mine doing? Receiving financial aid from a rich and disloyal friend. He's got a lot of friends in high places. The grand tale of the Argonautagos would complete with Hellenic League playing an important role in the tale for the hunt for the Golden Fleece. People from far and wide come to our lands to hear the original tale of Jason and the Argonauts. Some people claim a new Homer has been born, while others lay the honor at our feet for supporting the arts. Fantastic work. Wow. That's great. For the national tax. It takes several years for people to arrive in this faraway land. Which again, it's a mix of Greeks and Phrygians that live here. Some of which uh, would become the ocean. As we know that Macedonia is not an integrated culture. We have more disloyal characters. General of eight Stratos, which is Alexan Alexandros. He's not pretender anymore. That means <gasps> another child, Caprius. 
Macedonian culture, oddly enough. Say the ocean, but sound Macedonian. Instead of the ocean. I wouldn't worry about that too much. Happy for you. That means um, Alexandros is out of the line of succession. So he's back to with us for once. As we finally have some control for his army. But the problem is that's going to add up to a lord of maintenance because it's a whole nother army to maintain. the governor of Africa. Less corrupt. Oh yeah, it'll go back around. Not to mention that city is a metropolis. Harsh treatment. Get some resources to please the nobles, even if it's, uh, I don't know, anything that isn't from here. Tyranny goes down fast, you know. Especially more so when when she becomes Basilisa. Oh, wait a minute. Um, you're actually pretender now, and it's my grandson. Uh oh. Uh oh. Um, I should actually seek treatment right now. Keep my help get rid of it, just just delay it so I can live slightly longer. I did not realize that Heraclea is not going to be Gitch Basilisa. And um, she's extremely disloyal. She's a bitter plotter. Realizing that she's been duped. And also the boys of Macedonia not of the ocean because of who the father is. Hey, stop that. We don't have the political influence yet. But everybody's behind her. This changes a lot. We gotta demand oaths of allegiance to our new grandson right now before everything start spiraling down. Mm -hmm. The tutor we employed to oversee the education of our heir, Abreus, has been infusing lessons with an ideology unfamiliar to Hellenic upbringing of Abreus. We are faced with an unfortunate decision. Um, if we let this last continue, um, Abreus is sure to adopt the Armazic faith. If not, we are forced to deprive her parents of this position. I didn't know you were of that religion. That would not be a good idea to convert to faith, but fire him immediately, despite the fact he's one of the talented ones. I adopted him, you know? Well, listen, you're fired and you're not fired. Just don't change that boy's faith. Plus, he's an infant. He doesn't know anything about our gods versus your gods. He doesn't know any of that. 
This is why we don't not want to rush into fighting against Rome right now. Because I knew something like that would happen. I mean, at least I didn't get a son, but a grandson? Oh, that's worse. General First Stratos. It's fine, so... That means he'll get a few units. Dark, no longer have dysentery. So that way I, I just want to restore a little bit of health. Just keep it at bay. So in two months. What's Rome up to? Intervening in another one of those wars. Well, brother, you're not in the line of succession anymore. And not to mention you're a terrible general, but we may have something for you. And I got it. Hey! You're supposed to come pick up the uh, cavalry fleet. How dare you? I do not want to do that. As hoarded. Oh, I had a less talented family. Keep forgetting. We may find something for them. Except he already has a job. A lot of it women. Oh boy. He doesn't hold any. Not good at anything else, but just put him there. That would do nothing for the legitimacy. And what to do with this one? Oh, switching positions. It helps to lower the. Uh... No, that's change. Look, the real question is, do we let them have that majority support that I may give any demands just to move her up while we disown Abreus? All because of that lustful admiral of his? Clearly he's been out at sea for too long.
I think I got some for Alexandros. You're gonna be stationed, Gordon. You will deal with the possible insurgency over in Eastern Phrygia. You're gonna be heading to Pella. Plus, you're not gonna be provided safe transport. You're gonna walk your ass all the way over there. Citizen happiness, not noble. At least on what I saw that symbol. And less ship damage taken. Possible threat of civil war because of governor of Macedonia and the head of that family who's become disloyal as of late. Because he's plotting quietly, which oh just let it pass and he ain't in good health. But as for the governor, who's also plotting, why the hell is everybody plotting? Well, they're gonna both come around, so just let it be. Well, let's provide him relief. I've been negligent, I must admit. I don't know what's causing us food shortage over there. Besides the um, obvious thing. Give them some vegetables for but a monthly food modifier. Put some livestock. Hope we'll provide relief for you folks. Because Starving Pops is not a happy pop. Now they're gonna start coming around. So we give them food relief. More stability. Higher stability means happy general population happiness. <gasps> so some of the errors are starting to come around, but not all. Even God too is finally coming around, so... Should have been you. Because you could have been the one to provide stability to the realm thanks to your charisma, but... Clearly it's not to be. Don't worry about the Civil War. Possibility. Yoink. Remember, we have claims for Atenum and Latium. I believe we could spend it a bit. To, um... Fabricate claim in another area. Here. That's why we don't want to rush it. Isn't there a... Argata has a passive... Stability? 
Yeah, this one. And if you were to change that, that'll take a quite a drop. Our sails, no. Plus, we never called upon Zeus for this sort of thing, so screw it, switch it. And a territory is owned by the Hellenic League. The tutor. We are employed to oversee the education of our era of Braeus. Staunchly, Beelshians convince of Braeus that our own wages are superior. We let the risk team of Braeus sure they fully adopt the traditions and language of our people. Else we must relieve in this position that court and allow them to be rested on him. Converted culture. Yes. Do not know we own that temple in the most unstable of areas, which can be approved upon, since it is a temple and not a metropolis. So there you go. I know we have negative stability again, but just this once. Sacrifice, which will get it up faster. And that means those provincial areas are going to be back to being really unruly again. I'll be an empress. Rebellion is spreading in Judea. They could do little to stop them. But you know, technically, since we're a great power, we're allowed to um, enforce or intervene. Of course, we're not in position, um, army wise, to be doing that. We have no disloyal characters right now, except for Daughter and Pretender. Quite honestly, it should have been you, but that lusty husband of yours. He's already got good finesse for the base, but nothing on any of these. It's just only two. Be patient. And also, that adds up to, well, highly uh, likely have something else. So it's highly likely now that we will have a child ruler based on the current age and 70 now. Just want to full legitimacy. Tarantine advance. So it adds up the light cavalry defense. Since there is no shortage of light cavalry here. Speaking of light, transfer them to another army. Donate to the poor. Good move, despite the limitation. Again, kind of have cold feet about switching uh, our form of government. Wish we were an empire. Did the 
Persian Empire defeat the Mauryans to get what they wanted? Looks like it. Looks like they did. Potential Mauryan revolt. If it were to occur, it would be a huge win for the Persian Empire. We no longer have any aggressive expansion, which one would think we are ready for war right now, but we'll get moving on soon. We just have to complete the little transfer. We're gonna be they're gonna be joining up with them. Sure. Alexandros will be on reserve. I think we know what our first course of action will be. Enough to make it a metropolis if people were to continue to migrate here. And have a less corrupt governor, if we can. Otherwise, I'm going to impose sanctions on him, but it would make him this slow. Or alternatively, put him on trial. He's not this slow. You could just sack the governor and just change it to a much younger and competent one. Oh no! Very corrupt! So it would have to be him then. He's a scholar, so as governor, he will do well for adding up research points. Does statementship effect? No. No. He is the son of the governor of Salenica. Governorship runs in the family, I guess. We continue to centralize population. And if I had a lot of political influence, I would invest in that area as well. The Osha people at large are just... Well... They're just gonna hate. Treasonous forces utterly crushing the loyalists. Egypt took advantage of the situation and of retaken areas of Philistine. Here. That's another part of uh, Italia that has to be taken in the future. Finally, that old man croaked. Someone less corrupt. Seatfall won't do any good. Phrygian Canaanite. Not sure about that. So again, he's going to be held back there. Until, uh... Province loyalties go back... Excuse me. Um, go back up this way. Which we kind of... Got them all together for the most part. But this we can do nothing. 
they're gonna starve out then. That's gonna add a small rebellion possibility. It'll slowly come around. So is this, this, not this one. You know, I really don't see what's going to matter other than just change it to harsh treatment and they'll come around. Despite all the food that we gave them, Croton's providing nobles. Aren't there buildings that, yeah, libraries, but. Sorry about this. Yeah, they're all come around except for this one. So we got this under control. original post. We know where that Roman fleet is. They're gone. Crap. Part of this saw me now. Damn sure. Now it's fully low. Now we can start building buildings. Build libraries, food mills. Theater and a temple for slow Hellenization as for everything else. You know what? Not a temple, not a Later. And a mill. Move up. You're going to be transferred to, a, to the Italian front. Preparation of an upcoming conflict. Got more finesse, has a bit of charisma for a three-year-old. Again, this grow month, grow up scheme, I mean, each month you have a chance of getting this. But I have not suffered a health deterioration just yet. But if I want to further um, increase the health, I'm going to need a better one, but... Statesmanship is... Well, he's the best one out of all. Sign him up. Silistia governor is fast. Oh, no. Anyone else that isn't corrupt and is from that family? No. Well, are they at least good at anything? Ness, Ness. The 
gonna put you on this one. Hold on, I'll find something for you. Aha. Uh -huh. I know your crop is all heck, but I'm putting you in anyway. It would have been either that or make him an admiral of a single ship. Like that one over there. Careful that storm. This one's gonna go to Sicily. This is just to capture this city when hostilities begin. Pregnant again. Oh, here we go. I have cancer now. So, on at this rate. 56 this is 56.73 is to help and slowly deteriorate so that's 50 months 50 months so that's and uh, Abreus grandson of uh, Ariclea got a little more charisma no martial yet so his rule will begin at six years old Six or seven years old. This would be bad. I don't have enough political influence for this sort of thing because of disloyalty of consort, rampant corruption. But that's my fault of all the. Um, but that is my fault due to the uh, bribery and getting the Gordian holding. Which I admit, it is my fault. But I would love to have a little more political influence to use it to demand also allegiance. So. So when ambition fulfilled, lose scheme influence, more political influence. So I need a little more. Get it up to 80 before I pass. I'd be willing to do anything at this point. Actually, no, no, no. I mean, we got the provinces back around together. I should go to Sicily. To take care, take care of this area. So head up to Taurus. Again, the war with Rome will happen in the next episode. We we'll want to end the episode with this new young Basilus. Which we don't know what he's going to turn out to be, but we just hope for... Weak willed. He'll do. Does a low finesse of a government add to. Let me see. At least Egypt's never been a, uh, a, a place that often becomes unruly. Glad the stability makes a difference. Recruit general costs reduced. That sounds like a very good idea. If I had the funds for it. Be on standby. I provide you with grain. 
it's a, it's a sink. Well, it's, this is the whole province, but There's some vegetables. Of the people, governor of Macedonia. Oh, you'll be fine. Why not? There, we got that. Full legitimacy. Now they rally around Cleopatra instead of uh, Cleo. Another daughter. Not a pretender. Oh my, she's very charismatic. Because she wants to become a politician. She's sort of a founder. She's about to turn 16. And she is a rival of her, Clea. But not a rival to the grandson of mine. Now you become ambitious. Let's see. Rome's got too many allies for its own good. Cleopatra, the half Greek, half uh, Carian, she picked up silver tongue. Oh my, why don't we make you the ruler? Because huh. it's the best charisma I've ever seen in a, any character. Sometimes life just isn't fair when it comes to a line of succession. Your rat's got all of them. Two years, Stephanie's gonna go down slightly. Hasn't picked up any martial or zeal, which seems like it runs in the family. The martial part. Gains over allegiance for 60 months, which we can do that at any given time. But I think we do have the time to fabricate another claim. Dodecopus, here. Still alive. What's Carthage up to during all this time? No way. Oh, they're taking advantage of the little bastards! Persia's at war. Oh, there's a rebellion of a local area up there. Moria has averted revolt, but they have failed to take any relevant objectives. Because Alupa is advancing. I like to keep my popularity up. I'm gonna have to flog your ass. Oh, 
no. It's one of the good emeralds. Been murdered. Calabias. Try to stay. Not sure about him. Oh good, a dumb loyal one who's good natured. Tactically inflexible. Just putting you in there. What do you think you're doing? Got a bit of a zeal, and uh, what's that? Merciful. Adds a little more charisma. And when you become ruler in the future, uh, Freeman will be up in Greece. Less tyranny. Um, the tyranny reduction would go down faster, so. That sounds good. He knows mercy. But he does not know war, which again, it runs in the family. Seems the entirety of the Theban playthrough that we never had great martial rules. In fact, let me bring up this um, ledger as time passes on. We never had a great one. Only Cassandra, a female ruler, had better martial than any of us of the past. But it doesn't stop us from expanding to this big of a, of a country. Of the Hellenic League. Because we had to rely on talented generals from other sources than from our own family. Oh, of course, we can pick up. Drop us off here. To Panomas. What's my health currently? Though, honestly, I would have rather had Cleopatra rule the country than let the grandson rule it because he's simply a child. He is only... he's about to be six. That's it. Support him right now. Because it's for 60 months. Let me see. Yeah, do it now. A continuation of Dying Springs. Straight to security to him. Aristobulus. Aristobulus. Uh, While the fearsome and honorable passes. Well, fearsome is an understatement. Cannot rule forever. We must rouse support for the future of Aristobulus line. If Cleopatra gets all the support while Abreus will begin his rule, it's going to spell a lot of trouble. So we encourage. Come around. Some of the governors, some of the uh, military men are supporting him. And we hope for more to come around. Not to mention increased popularity slightly. to do it. So we've practically um, covered all bases here. Except for Dendaria. something in there. Ah, food, of course. With monthly modifier. Local unrest reduced. Put it there. If only we've gone over that. 
It's the same for this one, but Persian Empire's in the way. We have to call it for increased economy. Done all I can. My time will be coming soon. It could have been you. It could have been Cleopatra. But instead, it's gonna go to a brave. A grandson. So there we go, we have uh, near full support. So the cancer will be taken away from me as I continue to get more influence a little faster. But if I could have, well, well, no, save it up for the, for the grandson. Don't spend any more political influence. No more of that. We just hope for a smooth transition. Even though we're going to have a child ruler and this may spell trouble to some. But there are not going to be that much people who tend to support. So, thankfully the oath to the allegiance, what is going for them? But hey, at least he's a male, and not a female, some would think. But to me, well, I would have gone either of those two, but it's not to be. Now we have full legitimacy, so we, we hope it for a smooth and secure transition of power. As I will pass, and young Abreus, um, which he'll be seven years old when his rule begins, his popularity will be very low, which may spell trouble for the realm. I mean, we can't know for certain. We have Troy's Bios, and he was originally born Macedonian culture because of the father. But again, he's the ore master, that's why we put him in the navy. Not to mention that we do not have the time to um, put corrupt governor officials on trial. General Force Stratos, are you stationed in... Um, he's in Pella. That's the cavalry. He's plotting quietly, so he'll be all right. Wait, look at it again. The Egyptian wants a holding out of him, which he owns too much. Oh, yeah. You know, he's head of the family, right? Yes. Beware. We'll see where this goes. Our manpower is full, we're ready for war, but we don't want to rush because we want to know what happens in this transition of power. I mean, I would have taken advantage of the Romans right now, but I'm not risking it. You know what, Brother Alexandros? He looks like you get to outlive me. So you station yourself in Amphipolis for a possible second front with the Romans. Save the political influence for the grandson. We got that settled, right? And our stability is high, at least. Although, stability will drop once I pass, but it'll still be on the positive. Thanks to the sacrifice that we made to the gods. A little more. 
It'll remain positive stability. He's got more charisma. He's seven now. This uh, modifier has expired, so... Have we ever had a more charismatic ruler before? I don't remember. Yeah, we'll do. In fact, the founder of the Aristodema dynasty, which Hippostratos, was the most charismatic ruler we've ever had. Because, you know, he was a nice man. Yeah, he was the founder of a resurrected Thebes when the city was rebuilt by Cassandros. A long time ago. Feels like a lifetime ago. Many lifetimes, in fact. So, we've pretty much settled this here, so let's speed it up. Ain't nothing much gonna happen. Yeah, you get to have a temple. Well, welcome them in. Looks like we have some talented individuals. Because they all have good martial, I see, for potential replacements. But I can't always guarantee them. Awaiting the inevitable. Sure, I said a lot of bad things about Alexander, but we were never rivals. We just had a disagreement line of succession, but that time has come to pass. But as I said, I have no axe to grind anymore. The cat's is going to take me away, and I'm going to have to accept that. Got a bit of finesse. It was four earlier. Again, zero Marshall, which runs in the family somehow. But can't do anything about that. Just gonna have to accept the fact that this entire playthrough we never had a good Marshall ruler. It was General Second Stratus. He's brave, but ups the morale of armies. Well, we do need support. That's up there. Can't you just leave me in peace? Source of the rumors. I could tell that wasn't him. Which he was governor of Thrace. Oh, extremely corrupt. Anyone else? Of course not. Don't you know that Timids are the least talented family there is? Go put him in. See what happens. It's one of the more loyal provinces there is, so what's the harm in that? We'll deal with it after the war with the Romans. 
as they're continuing to beef up their defenses. Less than 10 months now, I'll be dead within Minas. Well, perhaps it could be won over. I am going to be corrupt for the last time of my life. Now, my son at 8, has he got a bit more charisma? I mean, at least they will rally behind him. Thanks to his charisma, but he will begin his role at the age of eight, which means eight more years till he becomes full adult, and he'll take up arms in this um, um, royal army, which we use it for originally garrison duties and then the occasional infantry support. Nothing we can do about that now. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Aristobulus to die of cancer, to go home with the gods, and then for the first time we've had a we have a child ruler, I believe, um, first time, and uh, we hope for a smooth transition of power. If not. Well, you're not going to ask me for this, fortunately. And, uh, we wish them the best. We wish the Braves the best. You take it. Okay, here we go. It's going to be in the spring. Fare thee well. When did his rule begin? March 5th. Here it is. Old loyalties and allegiances in the market are never entirely tied to the state. But rather to the monarch. With the death of Aristobulus, Aristodemon, our grasp over the various parts of empire loosens ever so slightly. It'll be up to Abraeus to once again strip it all and win the hearts of his people, prove himself more than just a new face on the coins. Long live the monarchy! Um, Abraeus rose to the throne and will now rule a glorious nation. He's got a lot of charisma, at least for a boy of his age. Um, the gods are we weeping over the passing of Aristobulus. So that's what it says and what he died of. There is a real risk of rebellion possibility. But stability drops slightly. And who the heck's gonna run this army temporarily? Even though we only use it for infantry support. But also you have to adopt somebody, more than likely. He'll be turning nine this year. And I'm sure he'll pick up another trait in the time being. At least you support me. But now Alexandros is back in the game on the line of succession along with some of the other members of Aristodemets who are not even related to any of us but from other and uh, adopt and I can't do any of these except for arrange adoption because of circumstances like these and so ladies and gentlemen we will leave this episode on this note because on the next episode we will go to war with Rome for the entire Italia region.
Oh, and a bit of this too. Um, and that. We know where the Navy is. We know what our next move is going to be. But the real question is... Um, well... Who knows? But one thing's for certain. Um, the Hellenic League will be ready for war. Seems the transition was smooth and without incident. And let's hope it stays that way. Till the next episode. Until then, so long for now.